news when I was the keynote speaker of the Republican National Convention. Hello and welcome to the conversation. I'm Heil Russell. I'm Chad McKenna. <laughs> just, Whoa. <laughs> what's that? No, I know you just got the giggles. The, that I, took, caught me off guard. I, I, our show is called The Conversation, Chad. That's, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. It's a really clever <laughs> pun. And uh, Are you just now realizing what you've been doing for the, the last 140 episodes? It, it sounds like conversation, but because we primarily talk about Donkey Kong and the extended Donkey Kong universe. Okay, I was we, about to inter- I was about to cut you off because we haven't talked about Donkey Kong in a long time. Guess what, Chad? What's that? We're talking about Donkey Kong today, this week. Yeah. Oh my God! As the show notes that I've perused would indicate. Yes. Well, we're talking about Donkey Kong in a strange alien world. But Skylanders. Sky- Is it Sky- alien? Okay, I'm going to... Uh, see, I, I, we're coming at this episode from slightly different vantage points. I'm the audience surrogate, I think, because I, I doubt most people will have done the, the deep dive into Skylanders superchargers that you've done. So, Unle- Unless all the Skylanders fans are tuning in this, this week. This could be the first episode for a lot of fans, and we're going to infuriate them because Ooh. we know so little about Skylanders. <laughs> even still, even after you've been playing it. I, it's it's in well we'll, we'll get into it it's we'll okay. get into it but it is one of the most impenetrable experiences <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel that way about um okay we'll get we'll get into it let's 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 uh, we'll plow through some due diligence for the the, the new I, listening audience that might exist i um, know this if this were a porno shoot we'd be trying to blow our loads like two minutes in and now that new audience is gone so you, um, you, if you think <laughs> you think this is the internet, Chad? You got to play to the gutter crowd, the gutter dwelling, sperm sucking crowd. It's I, it's what they want. I don't think that the gutter crowd has readily available internet access. <laughs> They're in the gutter, <laughs> unless sure. there's a very generous building with Wi-Fi next door. Yeah, I, no, I'm pretty sure. Like in in more like liberal minded cities, um, mm-hmm. you know, where they have the infrastructure for. Uh, you know wireless internet across the city then yeah i'm sure they have they have wireless in the gutter oh well that's true also yeah if you're if you're a a 3ds owner and your gutter is next to a participating mcdonald's you can get online with a nintendo hotspot that's right that's right so mm, bon appetit (laughs) although although our our site is not 3ds uh supported so (laughs) sorry about that what what sites are i don't even think google (laughs) will load on that sucker yeah, yeah. Some versions of Google, depending on wh- you know whether you're going with a responsive mobile or not. Yeah, they they just refuse to render. E- even uh, even Nintendo.com won't load on a 3ds at this point. You, you, <laughs> you, you load it up, and your 3ds just catches on fire, just flame shoot out. <laughs> you're like oh yeah, yeah. It's like Homer putting cereal into the microwave, just yeah. bursts into flames. Um, so we have a hotline. If you're a, a new listener who's stuck with us for the last three minutes, somehow. Um, we we have a hotline one, for calls. We can call one, and talk with us. 281-410-KONG. <laughs> um, that's 5664 for those last four digits. Um, we're going to listen to a few calls related to Skylanders throughout this episode. But we try and take calls every every week unless it's one of our special evergreen episodes. So yeah, give yeah, us a ring. Ask us a question. Yeah, you don't have to ask us about Skylanders every week. That, that would be weird. Um, and in fact, if you do, we'll probably delete the call. No, no, no. We'll, we'll take the call unless it's something like weird, like uh, you're just you just want to really chat about Spyro games and it has no other relation to the Donkey Kong universe. So, oh, uh, yeah. No, no, no. It's uh, it, it, it's not that I have anything against Skylanders as a concept or calls about Skylanders. It's the notion that someone who would literally call every single week with a Skylanders question may overstay their conceptual welcome a little bit. Yeah, we get prank callers too, and you know you just inspired a prank call, a new prank caller who's going to start calling every week about Skylanders. All right, internet, make it happen. All right. Um. Anyway, so DK Vine, uh, the overarching entity that houses the conversation and the rest of our media empire, uh, <laughs> has a forum. You can as seen in some British magazine, allegedly, be being Yanks. Uh, we we don't have access to the actual physical magazine. That's a weekly oh. too, so we we don't even have much time to even track one down. What what we're referring to is the very very amazing generous fact that Adam Park referred to DK Vine by name in a um, an article this week about rare fan culture and how it's kind of had a a resurgence. So thank you, Adam. That is yeah. like 
beyond amazing. We we yes, Hyle and I yes. were were like giddily texting back and forth earlier today about it. So yeah, wow. it's a, it's uh in uh MCV. You can actually read the uh, article uh, on their website mcvuk.com. Uh, don't, don't even know if it's actually in the real magazine itself, but it's definitely on their uh, online article. So uh, still awesome, all the same. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good read. Um, even outside the sentence that mentions DK Vine by name, um, it's 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 a really it's a really cool kind of historical um, uh, primer for anyone who's not familiar with the undulations of rare fandom. Yeah, ideally you would come for the sentence that mentions mentions us, um, and, and you would reread <laughs> that one uh, about thirty or forty times. But um, no, no, it, it is cool, and I'm glad that it's actually addressed in a mainstream publication about what sets rare fans apart from other fans. Not that we're better, but what what inspires us to be rare fans and, and that like core element that's missing in other developers or studios or companies. Um, mm-hmm. there, there's something different about being a rare fan than being just a Nintendo fan. Um, probably, sen- probably the systematic brainwashing. Well, yes, yes, there's that. Uh, and that also leads to the self-deprecation, the kind of um, skewed look on life. Um, and, and we, we just don't take it seriously, but we do. That's that's the thing. Like We take it more seriously probably than anybody. Um, because consi- it's stupid. Because it's stupid. Because it's fun. It makes life fun. And, and I think that's... It, it's just this weird uh, brew of British dry humor and um, just... I don't know, a, a childlike, a cynical child's view of the world, I guess you could say. <laughs> a cynical child. <laughs> like a child who starts every day uh, with black coffee and cigarettes. Just like, mm-hmm. uh, more of this yeah. bullshit. So yeah. every goth kid that you hated in high school. No, I'm talking like eight-year-olds. Like, Oh, <laughs> Every goth kid that you hated in elementary school. No, I, no, 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 because we're sunny. We, we like nature. We like furry animals. So, you know, we're not goths. It's a very hard thing to define, but um, but Adam Park did his damnedest in that article. So check yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Adam Park. Wet Adam Park. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't. I don't think that it was Wet Adam Park giving the interview. I think it was a decidedly dry or most moist Adam Park. You don't think they they hosed him down when he like came into the studio or came into the uh, the offices to give the it's interview? Like I, Adam, I, I would love to conduct this interview here, but I just don't believe you've been out swimming a shark. Yeah, they 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 hold the interview at the car wash. Just they they run them through the the cycle. Um, yeah, specifically waterproofed all the recording equipment. Yeah. So uh, enough about rare because this is about Skylanders yeah, and whatever company rare. makes Skylanders. Fuck rare! All the good ones there left in 1942. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. <laughs> that's not right. Yeah, all the good ones got smallpox and died. <laughs> Now, Heil, let's not let historical accuracy get in the way of Columbus Day. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's probably too soon to politicize Columbus Day. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you got to wait at least another year for that. <laughs> yeah, if we're still so close from, to 1492. We've got to wait a couple couple centuries at least before we can really make it an issue. Although apparently Obama got in trouble for mentioning the Crusades uh, several months back. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's really hard to tell what this tasteful half-life is. But um, I, I, th- I think I think in, in our culture, if it's before Christ, then it's fair game. Well, in our oh, because no, all, no, of, okay. all of all of those sins have been forgiven. So the Old Testament, really anything oh. from from no, you, you uh, can't assault four, the Old Testament four thousand BC up to zero, right? Well, no, you can't really insult anything from the Old Testament either. Oh, um, oh damn. So uh, anyway, this is, okay. This is tough. Yeah, we're going to start hemorrhaging listeners if we don't move on, especially okay. from this topic. <laughs> so please subscribe to the show on iTunes. <laughs> we're all over iTunes. We're all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube, Instagram, and like probably Periscope. I don't know. We're, we're on everything. Also, uh, once again, check out the Logcast. Um, it is a new rare podcast hosted by DK Vine forum members. Shogun of Truth and Say. Those are not their real names. <laughs> they they are running a site called Rare and Friends. That's at rarefriends.net. The Logcast. Um, search it in iTunes, uh, or you can watch listen to it on YouTube. Uh, and check out their website, rarefriends.net. Um, we should also give a little plug to Rare Fan Debase and Rare Gamer, which are two other fantastic Rare Fan sites um, that, that we 
you know, we all like to get in our, our friendly non-sexual circle jerk and, um, yeah. and talk, talk about rare. And if you like Donkey Kong before Rare, check out DKGirder.com. Um, that, that's run by one I am Gibbon from the DK Vine forums, who is an arcade uh, enthusiast. Oh, and, nice. Good one. Yeah. So uh, that, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of new sites cropping up and, and old sites that are uh, were, were recently uh, have befriended. But it's nice to see that the, the fan community we're just uh bemoaning last year that there there really aren't fan sites around anymore um when we're talking with the people from fan gamer um mm-hmm. just how the fan site culture has kind of died off and lo and behold a year later it's slowly crawling back from the grave so yeah i, I would like to see um ybk return uh <laughs> uh rare net rare net of course gun toting retro net yeah that would they, be, they, that'd they be great could, they could really like just start complaining that uh you know it's been years since a new for, since a new golden i 007 game made you by know, rare I, I really think the reason that rarenet was so insufferable in those days is just because we were 15 years old i think there's really nothing wrong with rarenet we were no. we were just fanboys for our part of rare right right that's that's, that's the weird really thing. the problem dan, imagine- dan is perfectly lovely person as far as i know could you imagine it? Well, we think we we don't know what Dan's been up to. He could be up to all sorts of shady shit in the in the many years since RareNet. But I I think it's funny that there was an era of Rare where you could have that bifurcation of the fan base. Where oh, I'm a fan of the shooters. I'm a fan of the platformers. Ooh, mm-hmm. it's it's like West Side Story. Um, I, yeah. I, I, and it, now they've crammed the sharks and jets together in one tiny thirty dollar package. Well, we know there's going to be sharks in uh, Sea of Thieves. Are there going to be jets? There might be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get we're going to get flagged if I could keep a tune by the YouTube copyright thing just for that little ditty. I, I'm Th- sure they are voracious, the YouTube copyright algorithms. It's I, insane. I, I know, I know. Like uh like last season like we we had a habit of like using actual uh music um on some episodes and yeah, man, it wouldn't take them long to like I mean, it wouldn't take them long at all because you would upload the episode to YouTube and bam, there, you know. Like, we posted the DKC exposed VHS tape and that got flagged for the video at the, the, the little, the, the advertisement at the end where they have the, the big white text on a black screen. Um, that drum beat behind that apparently like 10 years ago, whoever wrote that filed an independent copyright claim on that music. So any video of DKC exposed cannot be monetized because of video that Nintendo licensed specifically for that video. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's bizarre but yeah uh, anyway yeah yeah you so anyway yeah let's that's why we only sing uh our own songs that we wrote um on, on the conversation from here on out so so, okay. so chad um <laughs> don't look at me man if you're gonna set up this premise you better follow through <laughs> okay um Hey, we're talking about Skylanders this week. We're going to talk about Donkey Kong in the Skylanders game. It's going to be fun. We're going to talk about toys. Hey, we're not pedophiles. We just like talking about toys. Wow. That, there, there, there was a lot of... Okay, I have, I have two notes. Um, a lot of talking Brilliant. about what <laughs> about what you're going to do and not what you're actually doing. So really, let's bring it to the present tense and engage the audience. And two... You're protesting a little too much on the pedophilia thing. Maybe I just, scale that back. I or ju- or I, just jump into it. Just embrace the fact that you're a pedophile. Either oh my, of those. Oh, my God. I am, I am not, Chad. And I, <laughs> I, I just like to be upfront about it because I know that uh, the, the watchdog groups are watching us closely because we're th- men in our early 30s. Uh, talking about ostensibly children's games, mm. and, and I don't we, think there's any watchdog groups. I, thou, thou doth protest too much, sir. I don't know. I, I'm just saying. Or uh, I, we, we we only get like calls from Amechi every week. So who who are these other uh, thousands of people listening to our show on iTunes? I I don't know. <laughs> well, let's let's actually kick it off with a listener call. I don't think this one is Mamechi, but um, if you called about something non Skylanders related, we've logged it for later, so don't worry. Um, we tried to narrow our focus to keep keep things relatively on topic in case we go, you know, apart from any uh, <laughs> yeah. typical Voyager tangents. Or- yeah, it's a, it's a new thing we're trying being on topic. 
Um, it's not so going to no, last. No X Files discussion this week, I'm afraid. But uh, oh, I have some thoughts, Chad. I have some thoughts about that Chupacabra episode. <laughs> oh, the one where the Chupacabra is actually just a fungus in a porta potty. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, it played out played out like a really depressing telenovela. That that was that was the point. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was a piece of shit. But um, <laughs> the whole point was to be a terrible episode. Well, mission accomplished. Yeah, and then Chris Carter said, "We need to do more of these," and uh, <laughs> that gave us season nine. Wait, season nine was based entirely on on trying to recapture the magic of the fungus chupacabra episode. Uh, uh, the 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 pure. Um, unfiltered shit yes um oh whale song that was that was the end of season eight though so well it really it really triggered it didn't it yeah it, it really did I, I like to think season nine is just a spin-off of that whale song scene hey hi let's take a call hey hey guys it's your, uh, your best friend forever mitchell wolf <laughs> you know i figure we've gotten close enough you can call me machichi i won't i won't dock the points for it <laughs> Uh, how's that Skylanders, Kyle? You good? <laughs> is, it, is it good with that? Who's your favorite um, non-Donkey Kong Skylander? I assume Donkey Kong's your favorite Skylander. Is it Swing Kong? <laughs> maybe maybe Bowser? Look, I don't know. I'm trying to get excited about Skylanders. Cannot do it for the life of me. Does not seem appealing whatsoever. Trying to do it. Trying to get into that little Donkey Kong spirit. Little excitement I get for the Donkey Kong franchise whenever it has something new. But this doesn't... I don't know, man. Don't know. <laughs> Tell me on it. I guess. <laughs> or not. I don't care. <laughs> All right. General apathy from, from Michi. I, I, was it, I like was it how, Michi? Michichi? Uh, I don't know. I don't you know. weren't listening? I, I saw listen Hey, again. guys. It's your, uh, your best friend forever, Mitchell Wolf. Mm-hmm. You know? Got it. I figure we've gotten close enough. You can call me Machichi. Machichi, okay. Machichi, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not going to be calling him Machichi. <laughs> well, I'm I will. I'll, 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 all right. I'll Machichi for both of us. So, Kyle, right, right. is there any way that you can possibly sell Machichi on the concept of Skylanders? Or is yeah. that something that perhaps you haven't even done yourself? Why the hell is it my job to sell him on this? I don't work for Activision. <laughs> I am merely a third-party observer sitting on the sidelines watching the world pass me by. You're an influencer, Heil. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, in influence on behalf of Activision. Why should we be interested or even engaged whatsoever with the uh, Skylander Superchargers? Well, it's got Donkey Kong in it, Chad. Um, that's the <laughs> that entirely that's the entire reason why Well, I, I'm convinced. I, no, um I honestly um I'm not completely sold on it myself, Machichi, mm. so um Maybe this episode will uh, will make me uh, fall on one side of the line or the another because uh, right now I'm I'm kind of conf- donkey all confused by this game. Um, okay. To to answer your other question though, um, obviously yes, Donkey Kong is my favorite Skylander. That's a stupid <laughs> stupid statement to even question. Um, Are you familiar my- at all with any of the other Skylanders? Yes, um, and actually, well, we'll get into this. We'll get into a little bit of my history of this since they've. Well, let's just do it now. Let's just do it now. Well, oh, okay, okay. I I have uh, gone back and purchased some old Skylanders figures. Um, oh, I, I did that in the uh, ramp up to the release of this game. Um, since since they announced uh, the game at E3 th- uh, this past June, I I have gone back and tried to pick up some figures since. All old Skylanders figures are compatible with uh, the new Skylanders game. So, um, I think right now my fa- uh, he did mention this character Fling Kong um, from Skylanders Trap Team, and yeah. um, he is a little um, white monkey. Uh, by the way, four fingers on this monkey. Um, so uh, canonically uh, accurate with the non prosthetic golfing fingers of early Donkey Kong universe games, and but um, it, but it doesn't really yeah, matter, I, does it? I mean, are, are we gonna are we gonna cite the Pepito Kong rule on this, or because it's made by Activision, we have to take a no, step back? No, I'm not saying that he is a a legitimate Kong because he predates any involvement with Donkey Kong in it. I'm just saying it's it's mm-hmm. funny how that squares away with our own uh, fanon, if you will. I um, see. But um, and, and the, but the Peter Kong rule couldn't even apply to this because that would be a retcon. That would be the same thing as trying to say that um, the one character in Shovel Knight is Drumstick, another uh, 
another Mitchell Wolf classic <laughs> right yeah, there. Yeah, Machichi, Machichi um, at it again. I don't know. I, I guess Fling Kong. I don't know. Honestly, like the Skylanders, they're all so goddamn cartoony and like over the top that. What? um Wait, wait, wait. Th- this is mean? a you, you are leveling a criticism of over the top cartooniness on a Donkey Kong podcast. The, the thing about the rarest characters, though, mm-hmm. uh, they're cartoony they, in a realistic world. Yes, and, and uh, Skylanders is a bit more Saturday morning cartoon than uh, Donkey Kong or Banjo or Conker. Well, obviously Conker, but um, yeah, but but and, what does that have to do with the characters themselves, though? I mean, th- I think the characters are kind of tonally similar, aren't they? No, they're they're just in general the characters are a lot more goofy than um the the Donkey Kong characters, where there's a lot more. I don't want to say because anything I say it's going to make me sound like a. Uh, an asshole up my own butt but it's like the donkey Kong characters are a little bit more restrained i want to say um same thing with banjo like there's a little bit more of a dryness to them where it's def these characters are definitely more animated and um so what are they more conquery no 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 not even like just just a little bit more like this is a game written for 10 year olds not okay. not really for all audiences. Okay, so, so that, that, that that that's that's the primary difference. And even with like Nintendo's mm-hmm. properties, like Mario and whatnot, there's there's this kind of charm to them that I don't want to say these, these these characters are lacking charm, but it's definitely um, tonally different. Even if it's just this imperceptible quality to it. Okay. Um, do you feel like introducing Bowser and Donkey Kong into this um, sort of creates this? off-putting juxtaposition in tone but i think the juxtaposition works because these characters are explicitly from a different world so okay. it, it, it's kind of so it's not I, I'm, I'm not saying this is a i'm not saying this is a fault of skylanders i'm just saying and this actually serves to benefit what this this crossover um presents itself as it's just mm-hmm. um as far as me any of the skylanders endearing themselves to me no, I'm in this for Donkey Kong, and the other Skylanders so far haven't really won me over as characters. Uh, All right. So, okay. So, well, Fling Kong by default, because <laughs> he, he's a Kong. Would you, would you like to plow through the rest of these calls before you start talking in earnest about the game? Yes, and before I start talking about Ernest, because okay. uh, <laughs> Halloween's coming up, and I've got some scared, stupid quotes I need to get to. That is, honestly, that's... That's that's the Ernest playing for the cheap seats, and I know that's strange to say about fucking <laughs> Ernest, but <laughs> it wasn't as erudite as the earlier Ernest movies. Yeah, that's... when I wept when Ernest saved Christmas, damn it! I um... mean, er- Ernest goes to camp. The whole Foods crowd really dug that, but Ernest scared stupid. That's more of a Walmart movie, if you know what I mean. Sure, am glad it's raining. <laughs> Because the rain will hide my tears. Second, second time we've referenced that on the conversation. I'm keeping, I'm keeping score on all Ernest related references. I have a whiteboard here. Yeah, um, <laughs> you can now put another tick on that board. Two years later. Uh, so uh, no, it's Ernest scared stupid. Is like that's the one where he really went overboard with the impressions and the. It was much more slapstick, whereas the other a, ones there was, there, there was still. There, it was a movie about uh, trolls from the tree making children into wooden dolls. It it was terrible. And and yes, I granted, I know that I'm calling a movie slapstick in comparison to a movie where turtles parachute out of the sky and bite people on the nose as a means of attack. But again, but, this, is, this, this is the difference between Donkey Kong and Skylanders. Donkey Kong is <laughs> Ernest Goes to Camp. Skylanders okay. is Ernest Scared Stupid. I think that's perfectly cromulent. And that was a Simpsons makes, reference. It makes sense to me, and, and you have embiggened my interest in finding out what Skylanders has going on. Okay. Uh, uh, well, let's, let's, let's take another a, call. Yeah. Yep. Let's let's do that thing that you just said. Uh, hey there. I was just wondering what you guys thought of the toys to like genre uh, as a general concept, and also how did Donkey Kong's presence as a an amiibo and a Skylander influence it. Um, your 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 idea of it as a general concept, I mean. And also, what if Donkey Kong ended up becoming a figure in 
Disney Infinity or <laughs> Lego Dimensions. Would you guys consider that to be the real Donkey Kong, or would you guys go with the idea that they are action figures or little Lego figures, depending on which one? And if you guys did decide to cover it, which one of those two games oh would you rather Donkey Kong appear in? All right, uh, that's all. Bye. Okay, let's I, try I, to I wasn't, unpack I wasn't this t- one. I wasn't taking notes, Chad. I feel like I should have been <laughs> taking notes. Um, good lord, like, that's like five questions in one. Jesus. Um, <laughs> they've 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 clearly um, learned at the altar of Mamechi. So yeah, yeah well. The, I, I I was gonna say that the reference to Donkey Kong being in Disney Infinity, I, I I pictured Mamechi somewhere just having a joygasm, just completely enraptured by the thought of uh, a Donkey Kong Disney crossover. Yeah. Now I don't I don't know if if Scrooge or Donald or or you know Launchpad or any of those guys are in Disney Infinity, but if they are, oh, Mamechi. Oh, no, I'm sure Donald. At least Donald and Huey. Uh, Gluey and Dewey or whatever their names. <laughs> there is no duck named Gluey. <laughs> I didn't say Gluey. I said Huey, Louie, and Dewey. <laughs> no, that's that's their horse friend from the twenties. <laughs> that's Gluey. Um, Gluey. No, so yeah. anyway, now I think that in general, I I look favorably on the toys to what do you say? Toys to life? Is that what this yeah, subgenre that, that, is called? Okay, so, I, yeah, I, it's it's subgenre. It's like a whole booming industry unto itself right. at this point. But but I look favorably on it in comparison to microtransactions, for example. I think if you're oh, if you're yeah. if you're going to expand the content of your game in a relatively superficial way, um, I know that, that you know the the different characters in Skylanders or you know Amiibos operate slightly differently, but generally it's not super gameplay crucial um if you're going to do that then getting something physical it, alongside that extra functionality uh, i think that's a that's a pretty great bargain um I, I and i think the price point is right if they had tried to charge like 20 bucks a pop for these things no way but yeah uh, the, the, give, given the price of figures toys this day and age i mean with mm-hmm. the, the price of petroleum has risen and and all everything is <laughs> like inflated no i'm serious like the whole toys, geopolitical so, climate <laughs> And I'll, I, yeah, we're reaching peak oil, so kids, enjoy your figures while you can. Um, Heil, no, the Hubert curve has been proven false time and time again. Just ask the Society of Petroleum Engineers. <laughs> what I'm saying is we need to make uh, some Skylanders with uh, clean coal, because that's a thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So uh, getting, no, getting no. real political tonight on the conversation. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we're stoking the fires. Um, no, I. Um, I'm going to remind I, people what show they're listening to as often as possible on the conversation, and, and, and I'll laugh at the name, the conversation. It's funny. Um, You'll laugh at the name, the conversation on the conversation, which is where we are, folks. That's right. So, so like the the price of toys in general has risen since we were kids, and part of that's inflation. Part of that is the price of petroleum, but. Um, Honestly, like when I was a kid, I played video games and I would collect figures. There would be, I would always be into one toy line or another. Um, Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, it's not like I was, uh, you know, a a Rockefeller or anything. Like I I would get, you know, uh, one figure every so often, you know, or a video game once in a blue moon. Don't lie, Heil. You you had the Technodrome. I had the Technodrome, yes. But that that was like the, the, um, that was like the primary, like, that was my birthday present one year. Was the Technodrome? So highfalutin, I mean, Heil Russell. All I had was the damn pizza shooting van. I had that too. I and those things <laughs> yeah. hurt. Those things hurt when they hit you. Like yeah, you those cannot, little, the spring, the mechanism inside there is like a. It could be weaponized. I know. Like the NRA probably like has stockpiled the pizza shooters at this point. You know, because that's like Obama's coming for our pizza shooters. Um. No, He'll have to hurt. pry my turtles van out of my cold, dead hands. Those things hurt. You cannot sell those in this day and age. Also, remember when we were kids, they would make toys that sparked? Like, they would shoot, like, sparks out? <laughs> yeah, and they would usually be, like, encased in this little, like, flimsy clear plastic thing that if you looked yeah. at it sideways, it would break, and then it would just be open flames shooting into your eyes. Oh, I, I had a Ghostbuster, a real Ghostbusters <laughs> toy where you, you wound the ghost back and f- sparks would shoot out of his mouth. And even as a kid, <laughs> I was just like... I shouldn't be playing with this. this yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, no. So I, I would always 
like collect some sort of toy line. I I, I liked mini figures too, like Monsters in My Pocket. Um, mm-hmm. Z Bots was a favorite of mine. Um, I mean, early '90s kid here. Come on, yeah. Um, but uh, so I mean, this 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 shit would be right up my alley. When Skylanders first became a thing a few years back, I remember saying, and I, I'm sure I've said it on, on air before, that if I were a kid when Skylanders was around, I would have gobbled that up. I would have mm-hmm. I would have devoured it because th- it would have combined you know my my two things, and, and then I wouldn't have to really worry about anything else. I would be devoted. To, I I would be worshiping at the altar of Skylanders. Um, so I, I'm even, for, even though they're a little too cartoony as a, if you're a kid, they're not, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's like going back and watching the Ninja Turtles cartoon when you're an adult and you realize what a drizzling piece of shit it was. But when you're a kid, <laughs> when you're a kid, it's, it's like hardcore serious shit, you know? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm of two minds about about the original Turtles cartoon, and it's difficult, as we've often talked about, no, like no. the original games, like to separate that nostalgia. But I still say, despite the fact that it's obviously constructed to sell toys, because like Donatello, he he'll like <laughs> he goes up in the blimp and rides a motorcycle out of the blimp, and that motorcycle turns into a hang glider. Boom! In the space of ten seconds, that's three toys. It, it that's not a literal scene, but something like that happens in the pilot. Um, despite that, there's still some, some, something engaging about the dynamics of the enemies, like Krang, Shredder, Bebop, Rocksteady, Baxter yeah. Stockman, versus the Turtles and how they all had their own little domestic storylines going on. There, there was a little bit more than your average schlock in that show. No, don't get me wrong. Um, the cartoon version of the Ninja Turtles, the original cartoon, it was the superior version of the turtles property because mm-hmm. the ele- it was the most well thought out as far as the elements the elements themselves were engaging and still kind of captivate me to this day um just the fact that you had this weird feudal japanese ninja lord in the 20th century and he's living underground and he's partnered with transdimensional aliens it makes no <laughs> sense but it's so bonkers and, not, and, and that transdimensional alien is a brain that lives in a robot stomach who barks out orders like i want to get us back to dimension x there, yeah 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 and and so it's i uh, just i just flash back to the vine donkey kong audio program there. <laughs> oh yeah brang i think was our brang brang XB. yeah yeah um yeah i I, I, so like it, it's like the elements it's kind of like what we were talking about the other night off air about doctor who um it's not always the most well-written show but the core concept itself makes you want to keep revisiting it because it, doctor who itself is so like insane that you you were just enamored about so, about something you know it's even if it's just the concept of regeneration it just it just you want to love it and it's the same yeah. thing with the classic ninja turtles we're compared that to the 2003 ninja turtles cartoon and there's just nothing there for me to sink my teeth into yeah i've even started kind of trying to get caught up because now i'm i'm like being i'm under siege on all sides by people who watch doctor who and i'm and I stopped right before the 50th anniversary special. So now I'm I'm like one episode deep into Capaldi's era. And even when I'm just like rolling my eyes at the complete um, tonal whiplash, where rather than like weave together a comedy scene with dramatic elements and then the drama with some funny stuff, it, it's just like this scene is comedy. This scene is drama. This scene is confused <laughs> it's, they're just all kind of sandwiched next to each other despite all those criticisms it's always still incredibly ambitious and even when it doesn't work it's a glorious mess and and i'm enjoying at least that in doctor who on the episodes that i'm not actively enjoying so there you're right there is something i think it's just the the weight of the history and the depth of the world that you you can't look away I, I I will say though the uh, the moon episode is going to break you. I, I know you, Chad. You're going to stop. You're you're going to just quit after the moon episode. Heil, I have I have powered through the first season of TNG. I've powered through Star Trek: The Animated Series. I which actually there's some weird shit in there that's worth watching. I am. I am in mid season three of Star Trek Voyager. I can power through with the best of them. Okay, I, it's not. I, it's not going to break me. I, I will not fall upon the, uh, the the rocks like like so many moon eggs that are cracked open and then inexplicably replaced by 
the thing that came out of them. Oh, I'm that glad won't, you're, that I'm, won't I'm glad, be me. I'm, I'm glad you already know what happens. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you've told me. You've you've warned me what happens. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, this episode is notorious. I know it's coming. All right, all right. Well, yeah. anyway, but, but um, I also hear there's one called Listen coming up that's actually quite good. So yeah, I, that's that's one I've raved about, and you know maybe I'm just overstating it because uh, when you compare it to the Moon episode, it is a work of art. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, getting back to the point, and I don't even oh the Toys to Life concept. Yes, mm-hmm. I um so yeah, I'm all for it. I mean, for me, it's like um. It's like a Pokemon kind of game, only the game is in real life, and you have to use your your money or your parents' money. We we talked about this previously, but you know I know they're they're now introducing this Pokemon Go idea, and it seems like there are going to be micro microtransactions in that. But if this was around in the mid nineties, Pokemon, I, I I would have had all one hundred and fifty one Pokemibos. You know, like yeah. it, I would have bought all of them because you gotta buy them all. It it would have been amazing. I would have I would have bu- proudly I would've bought- lined up on a shelf. Yeah, I would have bought an extra one and microwaved it to make Missy know. <laughs> <laughs> it would just wind up looking like ditto. Yeah, but okay. So I, yeah, I'm all for the Toys to Life concept. My my criticism last year of Amiibo when when that was uh, when that first debuted was yeah. that there was no anchor game for Amiibos. That and it's still my primary criticism of Amiibo that. <laughs> Basically, uh, all amiibos do is they'll give you a new hat in a game or something. You know, they're they're incredibly, uh, essentially pointless to any true gameplay experience. Well, and the anchor the anchor game is Super Smash Brothers, but but then they did the somewhat confusing thing where they have different lines that have different anchor games. So now there's a Mario Brothers line whose anchor game is the newest Mario Party, and then there it's 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 very kind of confusing how they've how they've rolled it out. Yeah, but even then, it's not like you're. It's not really like any of the these toys are. It's not like you're. You're. Oh, I bought a Diddy Kong amiibo, and now I'm going to plug Diddy Kong into this game and play as him. It's nothing like that, and that's the problem. Well, Ami- uh, amiibos uh, feel- Smash Brothers. Oh well, no, Smash Brothers isn't like that, is it? No, no, it's not. No. For one thing, Diddy Kong's already in the game, so you're just right. making a new <laughs> CPU Diddy Kong that's divorced from the Diddy in the game. It's yeah. so it's so tacked on, and that that's it would have been my- nice if if they you know if like Ryu and Mewtwo and like you know the, the DLC characters they've done thus far, it, like if Lucas debuted alongside a Lucas amiibo, so you can either you know pay slightly less to download him or go out to your store and purchase the amiibo if if supply was yeah. where it need to be. Yeah, the, the supply, you would never find any, and if that were the case, if that were, like, the primary way to get the characters, that would, you would never get them. Um, <laughs> and, and so, yeah, like, what do I know? Because Amiibo is a raging success, and you can never find any of them in the stores, which I, I don't know if that speaks to how much of a success it is, or if Nintendo is just colossally bungling it, but... Whatever, no the los case, dos. whatever the case may be, at least I can always find Skylanders in the store. Like, it's not mm-hmm. like... Like, I wanted Fling Kong, because the DK Vine forum um, told me about Fling Kong's existence. So I went out, and I found Fling Kong. No problem at all. There he was. I bought him. You know? Um, it, it's it's night and day between uh, Activision's handling of Skylanders. Granted, it's it's the core experience. Well, again, Amiibos are kind of tacked on, so maybe Nintendo doesn't feel like they have to provide that um, supply. Because How many Skylanders are there? Because the the amiibo line, obviously, you've got fifty plus characters from Smash alone, plus the Mario line, plus whatever they're going to be rolling out soon. I'm sure. Um, how, how does that stack up to the overall? figure numbers for Skylanders or, or Disney Infinity, for example. I, I mean, at this point, there are hundreds of Skylanders. Really? Uh, and you were still able to find Fling Kong, just like that? Well, yeah, it's from Trap Team, and that was uh, last year's Skylanders game, so he was oh. still he's still relatively recent. But I also got um, Gorilla Gorilla, and um, he was from the, um, the Skylanders that was from 2013, so two years mm-hmm. old, you know. So yeah. not, not, not like impossible you can still find like go into a GameStop and find a version of Sp- spyro so you know it's it's it, it, they, they probably print a lot of spyros though because he's he's like the the original skylander right yeah and then they also do other versions like the legendary version of the figure and you know it, it, it's 
it is a cash grab, but the, the nice thing is you're getting a figure, you're getting a whole character to play in the game with an entirely unique move set to each character. Mm-hmm. So I think it's it's a it's well worth the money, and you know this it, it's honestly it would probably save parents money if a kid got into something like this because then boom there's your video game there's your toys just like i said you would be kind of just combining the interest and yeah but you 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 remember what it was like being a kid though you're always going to want more 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 different different more different more so so you would have you would have this like habit forming line and then they would also want every other you know collection of toys i I know but all the same it's still uh it's still a good uh middle ground i think um yeah it's great activision sales spin though yeah yeah Yeah. so um what what, how would we feel if donkey kong um appeared i don't know why he would but then again why (laughs) was he ever a skylander why if he appeared in disney infinity or lego dimensions chad one how would we feel about that two would we consider the Donkey Kong in Lego Dimensions the actual Donkey Kong or because they're the the Lego universe, it's slightly different than the real characters? How would we handle that from a DKU perspective? Uh, well, I'm not too familiar with how the Lego universes or um, uh, Disney Infinity universes sort of explain their crossovers. I'm assuming the Lego one is much like the Lego movie where it's – it's an abstraction of someone playing with Lego, um, and, yeah, and the, Will Ferrell is a terrible ones, dad. But all, all the Lego uh, properties, like the the, fig, the characters themselves, are like mini figure versions of the character. So, like Lego Yoda is not actually Yoda; he is a Lego figure that thinks he's Yoda. Right. So, under that strict definition, it might not even be DKU. Yeah, I don't know, because that's not something like Smash Brothers, where we can kind of skirt um, whatever the hell, um, you know, Sakurai is saying this week. Um, or Iwata, actually, was the was the big uh, Smash Brothers. Um, I, I, I know, but out of respect for the recently deceased, I wasn't going to bring that up. <laughs> you can quote him. It's not like he didn't say that. <laughs> I know. I, I, I just feel like it's in poor taste to say, well, we disagreed with him, and we're ignoring everything he said, and then he died. You can, you're allowed to disagree with the dead. What All if right. people think there's a correlation there? We disagreed with him and then he died? <laughs> I don't think we single-handedly caused his death. He, um, he listened but, to the conversation and it made him sad. But no, even with that, we can get around it because in-game events trump word of God. And obviously in, yes. in canon, Pitt is aware of the events of Super Smash Brothers Brawl but you know as evidenced by his dialogue in Kid Icarus Uprising therefore those things actually happened therefore Donkey Kong and Diddy were actually in that game yada yada so honestly if if Lego Dimensions had any of the Kongs in the game or even like Banjo what if like Banjo or Kazooie what if a rare property became a Lego Dimensions character that would be actually more of a possibility I think at this point well, but, um, it was it, it almost kind of happened with uh, Minecraft. We had Banjo, Tootie, um, Mumbo, I think, yeah. or was it Grunty? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and oh, oh, Conker. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I, I think Minecraft, you can kind of like justify that they're actually the real characters. According to uh, Lee Loveday, they were the real characters. So there yeah. you go. Um, but yeah, Lego is its own thing. It's its own universe with its own rules and it's harder to skirt around it. I think it would create one of the big Donkey Kong universe canonization battles that we talked about two weeks ago that it would, it would be an all out epic brawl in the DK Vine forum. And I really don't know which side I would actually fall, fall on because my instincts would tell me, well, we got to cover this, but my brain would be telling me. You're you're wrong, Heil. You're wrong. It's, it's not actually Donkey Kong. Well, yeah. you know, although there could be a case to be made for you being the person who's playing with those minifigs. Yeah, but you cannot make a game DKU because so many games would have a U in it. There, there is the DKU version of you, but that... Ver- that no, 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 that's, so- that's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you are the only character. I'm saying much like the notion that you were controlling the events of it's Mr. Pants. Like, like you, you in this one, basically these events are happening to all these characters and you are a godlike figure kind of making them happen. Um, and just as an artistic touch, they all look like Lego. 
I don't know. Um, but um, I would not want to see Donkey Kong in either game um, because he's already in Skylanders and enough is enough. Mm-hmm. Like, like you're allowed one. You're allowed one, Nintendo. <laughs> you're, allowed, you're allowed one of these crossovers, but no more. Um, yeah. Or else I'm going to be get, just uh, sourpuss about the whole thing. I, I didn't even realize Lego Dimension was another toy to life or life to toy uh property i do, do they really sell lego that have like a special chip in them that you put on a thing they're, they're just they're just uh yeah they're they're figures that you just scan in it's it's the newest one it just came out a couple weeks ago oh okay so but it actually does have the little rfid tag or whatever it is yeah that, yeah oh yeah, wow and, did, did and, not know that and the appeal of lego dimensions is that it's a crossover with all these properties that shouldn't be crossed into doctor who is one of them um the mm-hmm. ghostbusters back to the future um just all of these weird properties mashed together in the same game okay that's kind of cool yeah that's that's part of the fun of the lego movie itself which was actually really good so, I, so, yeah. so that's what i hear yes um you haven't seen the lego movie come on again i don't want to, people think i'm a pedophile if i show up <laughs> to see the lego movie it's gonna be like hey Hey kids, you want to sit next to me? <laughs> it's a it's a very strange attitude to take for someone who's been running a Donkey Kong website since his own childhood. Yeah, but at least I can do that from the safety of my own basement dwelling. Safety, safety. There there are not teams of anti pedophile crusaders with butterfly nets trying to to capture anyone who enjoys anything vaguely childlike. You're fine, I assure you. You can go see the Lego Movie in its 20th anniversary theatrical re release. <laughs> Then it's going to be even more creepy because I'm going to be in my 50s. <laughs> yeah, you'll be... Tw- okay, now, depending on whether or not you have a mustache, you know, yeah, um, yeah ju- judge accordingly. <laughs> um, so, did he have any other questions? I feel like that we're missing one one question in there. Yeah, there might be a missing a missing no in that call, but we, <laughs> we, we did our best unknown caller. All right, we, 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 I hope that satisfies you. Yeah, let's take one more. Hey, it's, you know, me again. Uh, <laughs> yes. I'm at you. Uh, and, um, hope Kyle's enjoying Skylanders and stuff. <laughs> um, this calls me about Skylanders, so. I, I just want to pause. It's, everyone who's calling, they it feels like they're, it's like a wake. <laughs> like you have died on the altar of Skylanders. And, yeah, I know. Wow. It either feels like they're taunting me or just sending their sympathies. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think they're expecting you to have a Donkey Konga 2-esque experience. Um, all right, go ahead, Mamechi. As I might have said before, I like the DKU um, encompassing, like, you know, different universes and stuff, but I'm just curious. What is your thoughts on the way that DK and Bowser were sent to the Skylanders universe? So if you guys have read the Skylanders comic, Mm. which is published by IDW, the same company that's publishing the Disney comics. Ah, there it is. on Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge. So, <laughs> in this comic, uh, DK and Bowser, they apparently ran into a portal to a different dimension. So, here's my question. Do you guys think that, like, jumping into a portal into a different dimension is, like, a really lazy... Uh, Really lazy plot device. <laughs> Could they have been more imaginative, like what? something else happened? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, something. Because I just think it sounds really lazy. Like, what if this it should have been something else? Like, uh, I, I, I just I just don't like it. The, the explanation, <laughs> I guess. Mamechi never change. It's really lame, I feel. But, um, yeah. Um, I guess one other part of it is that do you think that uh, this connects to DKU with the uh, Donald Duck universe because it's published <laughs> by uh, IDW Comics? Hopefully, please. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, I got an idea. Um, hmm. <laughs> instead of a portal, they, it should have just been that the Skylanders universe happened, just so happened to be like 20 miles away from DK Island. Agree or disagree? I agree. 20 miles. It should have been. No stupid portals would just say, it's been over there the whole time, and it just happened to venture off over there. Make sense? It does. <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying it. See you guys. Mamichi, out. 
Oh, <laughs> oh, call sign dropping he, it on us. He, he, right. dro- he dropped the phone. He, you see that? He dropped like, yeah. on you. Um, Memechi, out. I hope you didn't break your phone, Memechi, but that was amazing. Um, we hope to have Memechi in again. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, well, so I th- I think he, he answered several of his own questions, but I think there was one unencumbered I, query. Um, that was, what do you think of, of the way that they did get into Skylanders? Well, okay, there, there's a couple things about that. For, for First of all, Mamechi, you can't say, oh, man, it's just lazy to have, to, oh, they need to go into another universe, another dimension, so they're going to go through a portal. They should have really done something more creative like uh um just something more creative i don't know if you can't if you can't think of a good reason then i think the portal thing is the best you're gonna get Kyle, uh, this I, is how hollywood works you know you have people like Mamechi in the boardrooms and they're not creative types right you know they just they, they, they know what they don't like and they'll let the nerds make up the rest i want ducks in this movie i don't care how you do it i want ducks no yeah. pants on the ducks. They can wear shirts. They can wear hats. No pants. Give me some ducks. This is literally how a giant mechanical spider got in Wild Wild West. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if it was a... What, who was that guy? Uh, Kid John Notorious. Peters. Was it, no, was it John Peters? It wasn't Robert Evans. Okay. John Peters, um, Barbara Streisand's former hairstylist <laughs> who got into the industry through pure who he knows uh-huh. and, <laughs> and, and was as a complete hackwad obsessed uh, with spiders yeah like he had this idea i want i want a giant spider in this movie and he wanted it he he wanted in in, yeah in kevin smith's superman script uh the the what was uh tim burton was supposed to direct um and when that movie failed to materialize he eventually got it in wild wild west (laughs) that that shit pile from uh the mid to late 90s and um, is that what you want you want a donkey kong universe filled with talking ducks and will smith Hey, at least we have the giant spider. A rich, tr- a rich, no, a rich. We do have a yeah. We have several giant spiders. There's a yeah. smite as well. Smite, yes. From off of DK sixty four. From off of Donkey Kong sixty four. Also, speaking of Will Smith, did you know that he and DJ Jazzy Jeff are teaming up for a world tour? Yeah, that's a that's a thing that's happening. Nothing gets to die anymore. Nothing, nothing. I I, I like it, and at the same time, Will Smith is. I'm not as endeared to him as I once was. So. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's his awful children. Maybe that's his awful taste in movies recently. Maybe that's him being a secret Scientologist. I don't know. But, at, uh, at least he copped to how terrible After Earth was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It should it should have been called After Earth because I think a lot of more people would go see it then. Even though he never said that in Independence Day, that's the common misconception that he said, welcome to Earth. That's true. Yeah. It's 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 actually pretty clearly enunciated. Um, yeah. So, because, so you're, because, say, you're, you're, you're saying that summer, summertime will not help you to sit back and unwind? I, I I am saying I'm saying that I am past the millennium. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. The, the millennium is supposed to be now, Heil. It's whenever you want it to be. Mm-hmm. I wish it was the millennium every day. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I'm not yes ending you on this anymore. <laughs> um, You're done. Utterly finished with will smith discussion that's dj jazzy jeff i'm all right with though he's like yeah. the uh, he's like the uh, kel mitchell of the duo where i just want i i just feel bad for him and i want to see him in more things yeah i always felt kind of bad for jazzy, DJ jazzy jeff because on their debut record the title was i'm the rapper he's the dj and uh, you're already titling your record from the point of view of the fresh prince that's not fair to jazzy jeff come it's on not, it's not it's not anyway djs they're they're the uh unsung heroes of the rap world always getting turned into a giant rag doll and thrown out the window of a bel air estate djs live a hard knock life remember when we were doing elves and slick we really wanted to buy a high quality like mannequin doll so we could like (laughs) fling characters around but we could never uh, justify the cost yeah, <laughs> it didn't stop us with the, the giant novelty vampire head. That that is true. Yeah. That <laughs> anyway. So, um, oh my god, Mamechi, God, um, what the fuck? Um, the intro, the intro. How do they get to Skylanders? Because he mentioned that there is this uh, comic from IDW. So, and, is, and this, is gonna, this comic I have, canon? I, I have the comic in my hand right now, Chad. Oh wow, uh, uh, ambiance. Um, oh, is it canon or not? Well, that's that's the question because. Because, Chad, this mm-hmm. comic, it, it contradicts the game. It contradicts what? 
yes, we, we see two different ways the character of Donkey Kong gets to the Skylanders world. One in game, one in comic. And of course, you know our rules. In game yeah. takes precedence. Heil, next thing you'll be telling me that Tiny Kong is not a tax accountant. I know. It, what, a, what a crazy, mixed up, topsy turvy <laughs> world we live in. But no, I don't think Tiny Kong is a financial expert. Weird. <laughs> I don't think the character who is modeled to be a, uh, a neo hippie uh, is actually really into finances. No. I, I don't Although think it that's... doesn't. Although that, that German promotional material for DT, DK64, in which it says Tiny is, is an accountant, um, doesn't directly contradict anything from the games. So perhaps I, in German territories, I, it's, I, it's I th- subtext. I think it's pseudo like sexist. I don't know how. Like, maybe, <laughs> Wait, like, what? Maybe in Germany, like the women folk take care of the money, like the checkbook and whatnot. So it's like... But- I've never heard that as like a, a, a sexist um, insult that you're really good with numbers. That's that's usually leveled at certain races as an insult. But well, I, I don't know. I'm not German. So maybe I'm just projecting what I feel like is as a trope over there. I, I mm-hmm. that's where I think I came from. But I don't know. Okay. Ap- okay. Apolo- apologies to our German friends. Um, <laughs> well, we do have some German German uh, fans. Um so uh, apologies uh and call into the show and tell us if i'm wrong yeah so tell, tell us how racist we're being on your beautiful german culture that's right um yeah so, so anyway um, at any yeah tell me about this comic what happens well, in it and how does it how is it contradicted by the game well, did you read the, the comic first i yes i read the comic first so okay um, the comic is put up by IDW, who also does the Duck comics, which is really weird that they still do the <laughs> Duck comics considering um, Disney owns Marvel. Like, you would think Marvel would just do all the comics now, mm-hmm. but whatever. Um, so uh, IDW, um, I think, don't they also do the uh, the X-Files season uh, t- 10 comic? I've tried to block it out. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, you, you got this for pre-ordering the game at one of, one of the uh, Nintendo starter kits at GameStop. And mm. um, because I had already pre-ordered it on Amazon, I had to pre-order another one at GameStop just to ensure I got this comic. This is how dedicated did, did, I am. Wait, did, did you return it right after? No, 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 no. I, I had to get the um, either the Wii version or the 3DS version anyway because they're uh, Sky- it's Skylander Superchargers Racing. It's a completely different entity that I actually haven't played yet. Oh, so, okay. Um, so I, I was like, well, I might as well just – and this is going to be like a huge money suck. And I, here I am trying to save money to get married and whatnot. Um, Boo. And, 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 and my fiancé won't let me do a medical study. So there you go. Um, <laughs> Wait, why not? Uh, there's there's she, nothing that could plausibly go wrong. <laughs> yeah yeah and you see everything in purple now chad but oh well wait you mean everything's not purple since 2010 <laughs> you just thought that was an obama administration initiative to make everybody support gay marriage yeah i just i just thought that the the sun started fusing hydrogen in a different way as it and does we've all t- we've all told you it does to make you feel better but chad <laughs> the truth is your retinas were just damaged. I'm sorry. All right. I guess I'll have to blurve with it. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I, I got this at uh, GameStop. And I'm always leery about this kind of stuff, This these, these freebies, because I know they're always going to forget to give them to me. And I have to bring it up to them. And I feel like an ass for doing so. Um and I'm like, do, are they even get these in? Will they even find these? Because chances are these are going to be in a stack in a box somewhere in the stock room. And they're not even going to know they have these. So I go in the Sunday morning that Skylanders comes out. And, and I, I pick it up. And they ring me up. And I'm like, oh, isn't there like some sort of free comic I get with this? for? And I feel weird doing this anyway because this is Skylanders. And I'm a 30-year-old man who... Uh, Who's buying Skylanders? Just you're because... so you're so self conscious out in the world doing these things that yeah. that other adults do. You're not the only adult who purchased Skylanders. Just pretend like you have a child at home that's, that's not that's, locked up. That's, that's what I did. I was like, you know, <laughs> it's like my, my 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 little boy says that there's a comic with this, and that sounds even creepier. Oh so my I god! Know. I was gonna say, yeah, no, never never go out in public again, Heil. You're going to get arrested. <laughs> 
yeah, no, I am self conscious about. I'm not self conscious about my um, Donkey Kong fandom anymore because mm-hmm. I wear I wear shirts. I like I'm out and proud about that, baby. I I wear that freak flag high and mighty. But mm-hmm. when w- when it's like something like Skylanders or even a cameo game, I feel weird buying it. Like I I don't I don't feel like I. I have the sufficient time to justify the length of my obsession and that this is merely an extension of that. I, I feel like these, these people are just going to think I'm really into Skylanders, and I, I don't know. He, it, here, here's the good news, though. And plus, Having, it's game, plus it's GameStop, and I feel like they automatically judge you if it's not a dude bro game. So No, 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 no. Here's, here's the good news. Having worked at GameStop for one summer in high school and knowing, <laughs> and knowing that it's only gotten worse since then, they don't care. They're not judging you because you're not buying Gears of War. They they have had the life crushed out of them by like the 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 shareholders at GameStop Corporation who like everything you know they they have to go through their like twenty second spiel every time they answer the phone. They have to make sure they upsell you. They have to make sure that they uh, they try and get you to reserve a copy of Game Informer magazine. They have to do this. They have to do this. They have to do this. It's like it's it's become a soul crushing place to work, um, and it's unfortunate because working at a game store could be a lot of fun. Um, but I I really feel like I I, I feel bad for the people at GameStop. Um, and I've, I'm, I'm not basing this off speculation. I've, I've heard multiple like anecdotal accounts on our forums and on other places online that it's just, it's, it's a kind of place where if you don't jump through every fucking soul crushing hoop, you're gonna get fired pretty quickly. So I, I doubt they give a shit about you purchasing a, a child oriented game. Okay, well, they were holding a butterfly net, so... Uh, <laughs> okay, then all right, maybe maybe that spiel was entirely off base, and they just think yeah. you're a pedophile. Uh, uh, all right, well, all the same, I got the comic. That's my point. I'm, I I did have to tell them, I was like, isn't there a comic this? And they're like, oh, oh, yeah, I think there is. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I got it. Yay! Um, mm. And, and they're like, oh, yeah, you're, you're the first person to ask about this. Oops. Like they haven't been giving them out all day. And like, <laughs> People have just been coming in there, like getting the Skylanders starter pack by the droves, and they've just got this. <laughs> they haven't even cut the cellophane off the the stack of comics. Nope, nope. Um, and, and that's that's the thing about these free promos. Like, obviously, it worked on me, but you would think if they would advertise this, they would actually move more product. Like, there should be signs up or something. Yeah. Did you only For- find out about this online? Yeah, o- only because Cameron told me. No. So, uh, thank you, Cameron. Um, because of you, I was another $79 out um, in the this hole. Is, this is Cameron uh, Regal, not the newest community manager at Rare, who is also named Cameron. You are such a name dropper. <laughs> I've never met the guy. I've tweeted with him once. He seems very nice. Yeah, that, your name dropper. I tweeted with Cameron from Rare once. Uh, That's... Pretty, you're you're going to want to see him wet, too. Um <laughs> Anyway. Well, does he work at Rare? Do the math, Heil. <laughs> Those sharks are not going to escape themselves. You just want to hose down everybody at that place. Oh, um, okay, now you're making it filthy. No, no, I'm just... I don't know what I'm making it. I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just say things. I say... It's a stream of consciousness, the conversation. So I, I got the comic, and I, yeah. I, actually, I actually started reading it in my car, because that's how sad I am. Um no, because I was going to go hiking later that day, and I was like, "Well, I want to. Oh, I just want to peruse this. I didn't actually read the whole thing, but I wanted to see how they would portray Donkey Kong." Mm-hmm. And um, so I should say that the, the comic it was it, it's written by David A. Rodriguez, um, art okay. by da- David Baldion, coloring by David Garcia Cruz, and lettering by David Hedgecock, which is a fantastic okay. name. A lot of Davids. Uh, a lot of Davids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow. It's a, it's a trifecta of Davids. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, no, ex- excuse me. Um, that's edited by David Hedgecock. Um, it's actually letters by Tom B. Long. So uh, you got Thank Tom you B. for Long. correcting that. We were going to get calls. You got Tom B. Long. You've got David Hedgecock. Um, and they did how, how, how big of a shit would you take in your own pants if one of those names was Kevin Callahan? That's a weird statement to make, but yeah, that would <laughs> the, the, boy, that would be weird if Kevin Callahan uh, was involved in a Skylanders comic book. Yeah, just that, like that I, I've, I think it's I think it's seeping into my brain of the little Doctor Who I've seen, but just like the the notion of this this sort of 
historical thing. It's just been scrawled there for eternity, but it has super duper significance to one person. You know, like if, if, if just some guy named Kevin Callahan happened to be involved in the production of the Skylanders comic, you would shit a brick. I, so would you. We would, I we would, would la- have a mystery. Uh, we, okay. We, we would. Yeah. We would have a Scooby-Doo mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we, um, we would ultimately, you know, track this guy down um, with our our talking animal sidekick and pull off his mask, and it'd be like Chris Alcock, <laughs> name dropper. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I've tweeted with him too. He's he's called the show, but we okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so okay, the, the comic it, it starts off basically um, with a recap of the Skylanders plot. Um, mm-hmm the Skylander superchargers plot and then um smash cut to a portal opening in the sky kind of it looks like the the cracks in time from doctor who speaking yeah. of the devil and both donkey kong and bowser fall out of the crack in the sky and they land in a in a jungle and um here's the thing about the comic book and this is mm. this is if this can be considered canon and i don't think it can for the for the reasons um i'm about to state but um Donkey Kong doesn't speak English in in this comic, or he doesn't speak any language. He speaks ape noises. And okay. Bowser has conversations with him, a la Han Solo and Chewbacca. Or or Scooby Doo, the aforementioned. Yeah. It's yeah, but yeah, even Scooby Doo can must, even Scooby Doo can muster a few words, you know. A few no, ink, that's broken true. English words. Um But yeah, so so like Donkey Kong, he just makes noises like ooh, ah, ah ooh. Ah, ah, ooh. Ah, ah, ooh. basically it's, and then sometimes it's ooh ah ah so they, they they mix it up they keep it buried okay so so how does that i mean d- uh, does does that line up with his depiction in the game or not um well i mean th- I'm, I'm not talking about in just skylanders but in general we know the kong speak english or or whatever language it is in your region um well I mean, we, we, we know that they're able to communicate with each other in, in, in and that we are able to see that communication in some way. Well, yeah, but we—I mean, when you hear him say "Okay, cool," you know, I, I think that's different than all, the text bubbles are actually being translated for us. Plus, we have also seen signs in universe, you know, Cranky's lab, uh, mines, caves. You know, it, it's exit. You know, I, I don't. Yeah. And, and then that raises the question. Are the Kremlins just speaking guttural noises? What about like banjo? What about you know? Oh no no, we know the like, Kremlins it, speak English too. Remember? Yes, we've already taken care of business. Right, and, and I know there's a couple. <laughs> um, there's a couple cameo. That's really weird too. Like, that, that was yeah. Clump. Why, that was why clump, does clump? Right? <laughs> That's clump. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, why it's, does he sound a, like it's the- a better take on clump than like the uh, the Donkey Kong cartoon Arlie Ermy kind of drill sergeant guy it's more original but again that's the pedophile who's buying skylanders that the gamestop employees are calling the cops on not not you know <laughs> yes, i want to get I a will. copy of skylanders do you have any fling cogs left oh, 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 oh. um so you just uh, made that co- pedophile joke filthy heil <laughs> there's a couple of uh cameo games where um it's implied the kongs are speaking their own ape noise language mm-hmm. um so it, i mean it, it's possible that they they're maybe bilingual and like they, they've adopted like english or whatever language you speak but um they also have this these this ape language um so that, it's entirely possible that's kind of a can of worms we don't have time to get into this week but um so the whole the whole comic though he sees doing this and bowser is basically having con- it's it's cool that bowser at least has learned how to speak kong you know um yeah. and um there, there's After uh, all this time you'd hope there are some uh some choice quotes i want to they, they got they got the characterization of don kong right even if he doesn't speak english and i would like to share some quotes with you if that's okay oh, please do please, please do voices as well oh well, okay it's all bowser quotes because uh Again, he's translating, basically. All right. So, um, Donkey Kong sees a Skylander character called Captain Blubberbeard and uh, his pirate Ooh. crew. And, and they're about to ambush mm. Donkey, Donkey Kong and Bowser. And, and so, Bowser is not paying attention. And so, Donkey Kong's, like, freaking out. And Bowser says, 
who are you calling a big fat pirate? You're a big fat pirate. And and I at first I thought that was a K rule reference and I got really excited, but then I saw it, it was actually a, an actual pirate in the game and in the, oh. in the comics. So so that was disappointing. That was my first okay. disappointment. Yeah. Um, my my first disappointment and, is the fact that Bowser sounds a lot like you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll do I'll do a Bowser voice. Um, okay. Has Bowser actually ever like been fully voiced in a game? Was he is fully voiced in Sunshine? Mm, I'm I I'm just thinking back to the cartoon, really. But it's it's always something like this. Yeah. See, I thought it'd be more like this. Oh, God. <laughs> Ew. I can't do that. That's, that. that's like the Cobra Commander. What the hell is that? <laughs> All right, I'm going to get you, Joe's. Well, he's always got like this fire breath kind of thing going on so i thought it would like be like satan's butthole talking to you <laughs> man satan's butthole sounds different to you than it does to me and i uh, listen often <laughs> so that then he says see now you've got it upset my so now i'm doing harvey firestein <laughs> <laughs> oh oh uh, you've gone and upset my associate donkey kong he's a kong not a monkey and that's in reference to cap captain blubberbeard calls donkey kong a monkey and bowser steps in and he says, "Hey, Donkey Kong's not a monkey," and I like that. He's standing up what, for. D- the- does he d- does he say he's an ape, or does he say he's a Kong, or what does he? He, he says he's, he says he's a Kong, not a monkey. Nice. Which, yeah. So, yeah. I good, because he's kind of an uh, like an evolutionary offshoot of a gorilla. Really, he, he's a gorilla, but he's his own kind of gorilla. You know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, um, <laughs> he makes his own kind of gorilla. Yeah. Actually, so that's Bowser- that's what Wrinkly and, and Cranky did. Uh, yeah, or or there, 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 there's the missing generation too. Um, oh, that's right. DK Junior. and Question Mark made their own kind of gorilla, and that's where DK came from. Or DK is DK Junior. and the missing nope. generation. Oh, really? Oh, oh, oh! You're saying that that he the the entire time there was there was always the missing generation. We're not arguing yeah. there, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying okay. that our our DK is DK Junior. and we've never nah. met the missing generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could go either way. Yeah, yeah, but that—that's my preferred take on it. Anyway, so then right. uh, it gives Cranky and DK more of a a relationship. Yeah, um, Donkey and uh, Bowser are arguing when all the pirate goons are swarming them, and uh, Bowser says, "Don't, don't yell at me. This was your idea, Mister Sensitive." So I like this line because this is this, this is written for kids, by the way. So I'm not like saying this is like. <laughs> high quality literature so don't get me wrong i'm not a yeah. pedophile um but um <laughs> all right I, I like this line because you know the, the the worry when bowser and donkey kong are paired together is that donkey kong's going to be is being treated like a villain because they're two two mario villains teaming up but i like that this portrays that donkey kong is considered by bowser to be mr sensitive that he is a a, a do-gooder so that was a nice yeah. little touch there i, I um, dig it and and then uh, Bowser um, to to make the illusion all the more clear for those who can't read subtext. He says, "I don't care what you smell. Get your head back in this fight." So that's a that's a S- Star Wars uh, quote. I don't care what you smell from, from oh. Star Wars from the Star Wars uh, movie series where there's a there's a Han Solo and there's a Chewbacca and and Han Solo says to Chewbacca, "I don't care what you smell." Well, Heil, this this comic sounds really good, but I've got a bad <laughs> but I've got a bad feeling about this because uh, you you seem to indicate that it's not actually canon. So where does it go wrong? Well, can I can I read the Donkey Kong bio at the back of the book? Because this is actually really good. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay. Well, it, it's kind of good. It, it's it's not bad. It's it's so hard. It's so easy to screw up Donkey Kong that I, whenever they uh they just do an okay job, I'm like, yeah. Um, this is this is the bio. Okay. Donkey Kong is a fun-loving powerhouse gifted with great strength and incredible agility. His mm. insatiable curiosity and easygoing attitude led him to explore the rift that appeared in his native jungle and brought hey. him to exciting new adventures in this world called Skylands. Donkey Kong's fearlessness and reflexes make him a welcome addition to the superchargers and also the perfect driver for the stuntacular barrel blaster vehicle. When did when did non rare companies start getting Donkey Kong right? Uh, and that, I, I thought for for the longest time, like to Nintendo, he was he was the arcade DK. He was he was a dickhole buffoon, but toothy grin, toothy grin jackass. Right, but but this is pretty pitch perfect. Yeah, um, 
the couple things. He's a, a fun loving. He's easy going. Right. Um, you know, insatiable curiosity. He, it, adventurous. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I, 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 I like the idea that he stumbled on this portal in just because he was in the jungle hanging out. And that part and, could uh, be that part could be canon. Here, here's where the the canon of the comic differs with what's presented in game. Um, okay. In game, um, you start the game in the portal, and Donkey Kong's already like equipped with um, the barrel blaster vehicle. He's already in his jumpsuit. He he's he's already like primed for his mission, and he's like traveling from Donkey Kong Island to uh, the Skylands world through the portal with Diddy Kong in the vehicle. Um, so you can't. Is, really is that re- is the vehicle actually called the Barrel Blaster? Is that a reference to the game? Uh, I mean, it's actually called that. Yeah, I, I it might oh. be a reference to the game. They they reference so much um in his move set, which you saw a little bit at E three. Um, right. So um, it, it's it's kind of hard to square away what happens here with what happens in the comic. Um, so I I don't know if you could say this is canon. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean. Our take on like instruction manual stories, um, all that has been it's it's basically canon unless the game contradicts it, and then only elements of that are canon. So, yeah. um, I I think you could inf- like infer that some of this is canon, but I don't think like this is a literal reading of what happened sure, because sure. only in game uh, depictions can be taken as literal readings. So I mean, it it, yeah. it it is what it is, and it's it's cool. It adds a little color to this. Um, and um, I, I think the comic is going to be made available digitally and in the regular run of the Skylanders comic book. So um, if you did miss out on it, um, one, I'm sure GameStop still has stacks of it in their <laughs> stock room because I don't think many of them are giving them out. Two, um, you'll you'll have another shot at getting it at some point. So yeah, yeah. and plus so there's scans it, it, online. So you know, yeah. And if you don't want to bribe yeah if you don't want to bribe your your local GameStop employee yeah hopefully there are options um so let's get to the game itself i I actually in in preparation for this i watched a bit of a dk centric playthrough and so i saw all the intro and what immediately struck me was that invader zim was yelling at me (laughs) so i mean you're you're dead on that it feels exactly like a like a set it's like a nicktoon it's not. It's well, not like the a Saturday, the old school Saturday morning cartoons. It's it feel because you got Patrick Warburton as one of the Skyland natives, oh, but and, the bad guy, the bad guy Chaos. It's what, what's his name, Richard Horowitz. Um, it, he's just doing his Zim voice. He's not even changing it a bit. Yeah. Uh-huh. Also, Carlos uh, Alizraki does a voice in this game. So the the Taco Bell Chihuahua. Oh my God, Carlos from from, from off of Reno nine one one and Rocco's from Modern off, Life. From off of Reno nine one one and Rocco's Modern Life. Yes. Wow. Um, so yeah, th- 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 this is like the thing. This is the most high profile voice acting cast we've ever had in a Donkey Kong Universe game because we are used to the rare staff basically doing voices or, yeah. you know, the, the usual crew of Nintendo voice actors. Um, so it really it's... was strange in this video to see fucking putty from Seinfeld talking to Donkey Kong. It was, it was really weird. And, and that, and, and look, um, I don't want to like speak ill of Patrick Warburton, but he sh- for me, his shtick gets tired very quickly because he, he, it's just, I don't know. I, I and and for me like that mm. kind of like grated on me instantly that he's one of the first characters who talks in the game and there's Patrick Warburton doing what, hamming, what? hamming it up. What wait what shtick are you talking about? Uh, like, it's kind uh, of thing, uh, wait, a little uh, bit uh, larger than life that kind of uh, thing. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, spe- I'm speaking from my upper chest here and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a squinty eyed doofus. Uh, okay, all right, hi. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Three three words that I think would write your opinion on Patrick Warburton: the Venture Brothers. You need to watch the Venture Brothers. I, I have watched the Venture Brothers. I How have much? seen How his much? character, and I, I've seen I've seen a handful of episodes. Okay, because it's it is it is so tightly serialized, and it really only kicks off to in the latter half of season one that. Like it's it's one of those shows that I swear to God it would become one of your favorite shows if you watched it and I, and I, Patrick I, I Warburton mean, is incredible in it. Okay, I'm sure he is, but I I mean his just general shtick. I'm not saying saying he's he's a bad actor. I'm not saying he's I'm not I don't have anything against him, but he he does have this boilerplate like 
shtick he falls into for for jobs like this or for commercials that 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 uh those the car rental commercials he's been doing mm-hmm. great on my fucking nerves because he's just doing this character where he's just playing this egocentric doofus who's uh you know self-obsessed and i don't know it's just i pay i pay the extra four bucks a month to to get hulu without ads so now i am completely out of the advertising loop you're these references okay. are, are lost on me you, well, or I'll, you, I'll be i'll be stuck referencing pork and olos dos until i die yeah people called me out on that last week they're like you're wrong heil that was a national ad campaign i'm like okay i'm sorry yeah everyone knows the el paso taco girl she is adorable and she's a national treasure which nation i'm not not quite sure but she's a treasure maybe they didn't reach the mid-atlantic i don't know like <laughs> I, I i swear i've never seen that i have no context for that wow uh, al- also people thought we didn't know what curry was um because... no, we were we know what curry is we just don't know what you do when you have a curry like with with friends i guess yeah yeah because yeah, it... that, that that sounds like having a coffee together like it just sounds weird when you're having this spicy dish that will inevitably lead to your bowels exploding. And, no, she, and, I, I don't. I don't think that's the weird part. I've just never. I've never known that you do Indian food family style. I've always just everyone gets their own thing. But it's it sounds good. Nice communal well, dinner for, for me. Like, hey, do you want to go out and have a curry? It's like a coffee break or, or tea break and it's, but it, it's like oh man i could really use a, a it, it's it's two o'clock i'm dragging i could really use some curry it just, it just sounds weird and upsetting to me i don't it's know it's too it's too casual for what a curry would signify that's... yeah exactly that's that's the thing i i just picture them going to like a a, a starbucks and getting like a cup of curry and just chugging it and i'm yeah. like Ugh. Uh, what i want to take a walk around the block and have a curry <laughs> <laughs> yeah need to stretch my legs let's go have a so, curry i think i think it's just a britishism that's kind of lost on my american ears that's yeah it. um yeah so um yeah so it, i expect i expect to see at least three more pages of of explosive cultural fighting in the conversation thread this week yeah 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 that was basically all that the last two weeks have amounted to is people arguing how to pronounce mcdonald's is it mcdonald's or, or is it mcdonald's and, yeah. Uh, oh boy, that's riveting discussion. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, fried chicken in the pizza hut. Yeah, that, that that song was new to me too. Um, oh wow, it must, so that anyway, must be a southern um, thing. A, a Tex Mex thing, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the voice acting is really what threw me. And the the thing about this game is, you turn it on and it launches you into the story. Here's the problem, though. This is like the fifth or, or fourth Skylanders game. So there's a lot of context that I'm not getting. And they, they're not holding your hand, man. You're right into the thick of this story. Like, they're not... There's no training wheels at all. And, and basically, as far as I can tell, the story of this game... Let me see if I can if I can quote this from the top of my head. So okay. there's, there's the bad guy, Chaos, spelled exactly the same way as the classic and beloved Donkey Kong Country 3 enemy. Um, so that's a little upsetting mm-hmm. to me that there's now two chaoses in the game. <laughs> upsetting. Um, <laughs> like you have a visceral reaction to it. <laughs> yeah, I did because I'm sorry, there can only be one chaos. <laughs> there can only be one, and, and so, sometimes it's not Highlander. This is Skylanders. Oh, Ooh, that that, nice. that worked out way better than I anticipated when High I started five saying on it. That one, I'm impressed. Yeah, thank uh, you. Uh, uh, we should just end the episode here. <laughs> uh, you're spent. You're done. Um, <laughs> no, um, but it sometimes is even all capitalized, and that's what pisses me off. Like it's it like why is it all capitalized? Like I, I'd be okay if it was like chaos with a capital k and then lowercase i would be okay with that Mm -hmm. but when you try to all capitalize it all then then we have issues skylanders then you have a fight on your hands right um so anyways chaos he's he's the main bad guy of the game he is a portal master in the skylands and this this is all gibberish to me he he (laughs) escapes from prison and he has um Using he's using like the dark side of the forest to corrupt the portals so that you can't call upon the Skylanders and he's got mm. a, a device that rips holes in the sky that's tearing the Skylands apart and and so the 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 Skylanders have built these engines for the, these these supercharger cars that can open up their own wormholes 
to to get around. And, and, oh, so the, the cars themselves chaos. are devices to travel through wormholes. Yes, but not inter- interdimensionally. That's that's something different. But to get around in the game world, you use that the cars can can transport you and make great leaps through the worm using wormholes. Hmm. But the portal itself at the beginning of the game. Okay, so this is where it gets very meta. So brace yourselves. Oh, I'm um, braced. Okay. So basically, Skylanders, the starter kits come with a portal of power, which is basically um, what you use to um, you put the Skylander figure on and it, and it reads it and it scans it into the game, basically. Um, mm-hmm. you, you, you have to plug it in the Wii U USB port. Um, and um, basically, it's very meta because you yourself are a character in the game. They refer to you as the portal master. Yeah. And and basically you have the power to choose which Skylander you want to call forth and, and bring into battle. And Wait, hang on, but before you get into this, let's back up a second. You have this this portal that you plug in via USB. Why don't they just use the near field communication that's built into the gamepad? Because this is the way Skylanders has always operated. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's like it's probably the same technology. They just want to use their own thing. Yeah, basically, because the the Wii version wouldn't be able to use it. You you would have to have the portal power. Oh and yeah, it, no question there. And and of course on the 3DS, if you don't have the new 3DS, then you you'd need an adapter as well. But right, I'm just, so so th- this is more to remain consistent across the board. I think it, okay, it's, it's okay. all about branding. Um, so anyway, and um, and upcharging for an unnecessary peripheral. It's absolute, about that too. That that's that's shaped like a like a blue rock of like mystical bullshit. Um, yeah. Mm. So anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> blue you, rock you, of mystical bullshit. <laughs> that, that, yeah. Um, anyway, so basically, the, the, apparently this is a thing in Skylanders. I've I've, I've researched this on Skylanders Wiki, which still it, it it's above my head because they're speaking in gibberish this is all like it, I, I imagine this is what it's like for a non-star trek fan to kind of jump onto memory alpha and try mm-hmm. to like learn everything about star trek in like a crash diet of, of knowledge no this and, is this is much this feeling is of what you're describing is what i felt watching matt smith's last episode of doctor who despite the fact that i had seen like all the amy pond episodes and you know actually all of matt smith i i, I caught up with clara it was just like a clusterfuck of references. You got the silence, and now they're actually confession booth operators in a space church. But here's the crack in the wall, and and, and here's uh, it's like this and this and this, and you got like every every reference to the Matt Smith era was all jammed together. And despite the fact that I had a familiarity with it, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, basically the same same thing. Um, and, and you would think that you know with with. I, I was under the impression that th- they were like including Donkey Kong and Bowser in the Nintendo versions to bring new people into the fold and like people like me or you, you know, mm-hmm. hook, hook us and uh, it, um, also DK Vine uh, site staffer Cameron, not Rare's wet Cameron, but uh, Cameron Regal. <laughs> He, um, you know, he he also bought into this as well, and we've actually discussed it a bit and have kind of similar opinions on it so far, but. Yeah, so I, that was my impression. Yeah, on, our, so, on our staff call earlier tonight, I was asking both of you how, how you like Skylanders, and you were just like, you sounded like our callers. I'm like, yeah, how's, how about it? Yeah, it's a thing, I'm playing. It's like, there's I, just so much despondency in your voice. That, that's because I can't wrap my head around it. You know, I'm Mr. Continuity. I am yeah. Mr. Canon. I have all this arcane garbage in my head. Yeah, but that was this, your title at the beauty pageant. This is This is like... The entirety of the Donkey Kong universe, and then multiplied by two, and then I'm supposed to learn this all while playing this game, and the game providing me little to no context on what's going on. Right. And it, it's just so unfriendly for new users. And so my, my, I, I, I'm guessing that they only, like, the whole promotion with Donkey Kong Bowser isn't to bring new Skylanders fans into the fold. It's just Nintendo paid them extra so Skylanders fans would buy the Wii version to get these exclusive figures. And that that's my guess. So it, it's well, not it worked to, it's, on you to the order of $200. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, so I bought the Wii U version, the Wii U Dark Edition, so I get Dark Donkey Kong. I bought the uh, the Wii Skylanders Superchargers Racing and also the 3DS version as well. Mm-hmm. So, holy shit. Um, 
Uh, also, I, I then went and bought a, uh, another figure. I bought Dive Clops and his vehicle, uh, the Dive Bomber, because I had a land vehicle. I had an air vehicle with Bowser. Um, I needed a sea vehicle. And... Do, the, uh, do the vehicles come sold separately? Yes. Uh, of course they do. Yeah. You you could buy multi packs, um, but um that that like combine some characters, but other characters and their vehicles are only sold separately. So. How how do you traverse the worlds if you don't buy one of the vehicles? Because I remember from E three there it was a combination of platforming and vehicle stages. Yeah, I, I'm not sure yet. Um I think that I, I think they either like provide you something in game so you can just bluff your way through it it's or... just a jalopy it's like a, a pinto it's just a really shitty car yeah yeah i'm pretty sure that's the case um because yeah they they provide you like if you buy a starter pack you have everything you need to actually play the game but you won't be you won't be able to get everything in the game you won't be able to 100 mm-hmm. percent it unless you go out and you know buy 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 um spend 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 um so but... what's your philosophy on that because I know that you're a completionist. I, I, I eventually I will probably have every fucking oh. Skylander. Eventually, oh, oh Hyle. Eventu- I eventually. Yeah, I know, I know. You know what? You know what? You, you, you know I'm aware of my illness, right? You know, <laughs> you know, like this isn't news to me. So you know, I, I, I grapple with this day in and day out, cold sweats at night. So I don't need. You pointing out my character flaws. Kyle, one of these days, you'll stop peeing on the carpet. I just need to keep rubbing your face in it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, And just like in Rick and Morty, I will lead an <laughs> uprising. You've watched it! I watched that episode with you. Uh, No, I thought we only watched Scary Terry. Oh, that was the Scary Terry episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the B-plot. Yeah, anyway. So... Only in a show like Rick and Morty would the B plot be dogs turning sentient and taking over the world. Yeah, yeah. I I was disappointed they didn't stick with that. I thought like episode two, then they were just going to upend their own world and have it be controlled by dogs. But um, oh, maybe... Heil, oh, keep watching, keep watching. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So anyway, um, <clears throat> base as far as I can gather, then in every Skylanders game, you yourself are a character. Mm-hmm. And you are the portal master. Somehow you on Earth have have gotten control of the portals uh, of the Skylands. And you can select which Skylanders you're bringing into battle. So you're basically the um, kind of the tactical commander of Skyland, the Skylanders team. Cool. And um, so that, that explains, though, why Donkey Kong can be a character. Because you yourself have met him. Um, obviously, he first knew of you uh, from your uh, record-breaking performance on It's Mr. Pants, and yeah. you later befriended him in various Mario Karting journeys and whatnot. And and so, if you want a, a true champion to to lead the Skylanders to victory, you're going to pick your old pal Donkey Kong. Yeah, I actually have a screenshot um, of when my you, as embodied by my me, met diddy and dk oh that sentence good lord (laughs) (laughs) you my me met diddy and dk um in mario golf and i I actually got a screenshot of that um so yeah it's 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 surreal that you know we now have games where literally you are interacting with these characters in canon um one thing that really struck me about the opening cinema that i watched is that um in invader chaos was talk <laughs> talking directly into the camera to you yeah um, they, like they were making no bones about the fact and obviously it's it's for kids it's the door of the explorer dynamic you know but it's pandering to a great degree but it was it, still it, it, it was still cool because it works within our insane definition of, of you as a concept yeah and tonally i think that's what threw me too the level of pandering i think um <laughs> because this is something that you don't really get with rare and nintendo if anything like rare will, would insult you before they would pander to you <laughs> mm-hmm. so um well yeah, they so, would insult themselves then insult you so everyone's miserable <laughs> so, so the so the game starts out with donkey kong and and diddy who is uh the uh, basically the NPC riding shotgun in your vehicle. By the way, I found out um, there's that confusion because we saw in the videos at E3 that Diddy could um, 
fight alongside Donkey Kong on foot. And the guy who is demoing Skylanders for us said, no, Diddy doesn't appear on foot. You, you, you have to unlock that. That is the ultimate oh. upgrade. That is the ultimate move upgrade to have Diddy fight alongside you on foot. What happens so, when Diddy's there on foot and then you call your car out? Apparently, two Diddy's appear. Holograms? Holograms, baby. Oh, how about, why don't we not not go to the hologram well why don't we just say it's some kind of temporal displacement and those are the same diddy on two different points of the, of his timeline yeah that that's probably better because we've that we've pulled that card too in the past uh, so <laughs> well yeah uh, that, that explains mario tennis and 64 yeah yeah exactly so uh, or game and watch gallery four where there's like six donkey kong juniors jumping out of a burning building um, yeah that's, <laughs> that's true too yeah we do actually have to explain that because it's it's title screen was animated yeah, so I, I just like that they're going back in time and like k- k- kidnapping Donkey Kong Jr. from different nights and just shoving, <laughs> sho- pushing him out of burning buildings. Dude, we're just pissing in a time screen at this point. We don't care. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I like that better. That's probably the better plot. But the, the game begins. You're driving through the wormhole and the Skylanders are calling you from the other side, from Skylands. And the the, the wormhole is unstable and it, it's it's in danger of like collapsing in on itself. And yeah. you're driving through and it's getting, it's trippy. And so... So what button reverses the polarity of your tachyon disruptors? Um, I'm going to say uh, the right trigger. God, no one ever hits the triggers. You know, you, it's got to be a face button or no one's going to do it. You're playing the uh, game wrong, Heil. Yeah, I, I hold the N, I hold the N64 controller wrong. I do a lot of things wrong. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I I really dug this opening because this seems like the kind of fan wanky bullshit we would like have backstory for, but it's right there at the dawn of the game. Mm-hmm. So I, I like that Mamechi might have a problem with wormholes and and dimensional tears and whatnot. I like that it's right there in the DNA of this game because it also justifies a lot of our crazy Donkey Kong Island slash Mushroom Kingdom bifurcation, you know? Yeah. So anyway, um, I I like that part of the game and that part of the game was cool. I was like, oh, I'm digging this. And then you um, you get through the portal and you're on foot and... The, the way the game is laid out, it kind of threw me, and I didn't realize this at playing it at E3, but the camera is fixed. There's a fixed camera, and... Oh, it, I thought it was like um, Mario 3D World, how you had a little bit of control over it, but no? Um, as far as I can tell, no. It, it's like Crash Bandicoot, kind hmm. of. Okay. Um, and so it's uh, it's very linear. Um, Again, like Crash Bandicoot. It's actually the kind of game i sort of wanted donkey kong 64 to be um Mm. and the platforming is is solid um it is the on in vehicle portions of the game that are giving me a fucking headache and we talked a little bit about this um off air with cameron about yeah how it was structured basically it, it, it you've got this 3d environment that you you like the camera kind of zooms in at specific moments and then zooms back out, but you don't have control over it. Mm -hmm. And because you're, you're not like, because the camera doesn't just stay behind the vehicle, it means you have to drive in. Basically the, the, your brain can't keep up with what position the vehicle's in, or at least my brain can't keep up with it because you, if you're driving towards the camera, then your controls are, technically reverse from what you're thinking oh and, oh oh so so much much like rc pro-am you're controlling it as if you were sitting in the driver's seat yes but but your perspective is from a third-party observer yeah and that is the most frustrating thing we were just talking about I, somewhere along the way about rare replay and about how like your brain still can't wrap around conquer's bad fur days controls um yeah 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 and I, I kind of poo pooed that. I was like, well, if I play a game enough, uh, my brain just adapts to it, Chad. I'm doing my Patrick Warburton voice. Oh, yeah, I, I'm yeah, puffing yeah, out my yeah, chest. Yeah. I'm puffing you know, out my chest. Elaine, if you, if you play the game long enough, Elaine, it'll it'll work out for you. Yeah, I, I, I should never go mano, mano a mano with uh, character imp- impressions with you because you're always going to wipe the floor with me. Oh, no, I wasn't intending to. I just wanted to make a Seinfeld reference. I, I know, but you're so good at it. The only the only voice I can do with great accuracy is Toad. <laughs> um, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that was my Toad. Wow. That's that's Toad on PCP. <laughs> that, that's years of 
suffering at the hands of Mario Party. And that those are the demons I hear when the lights <laughs> go out at night. <laughs> you know all those stars you collected? They're mine now! <laughs> I see. I, it, when I try and do Toad, it just turns into Julie Kavner. So, yeah, you, you can have that one. Homer! Um, <laughs> hey, yours is pretty good, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, and I can also turn it into Harvey Firestein. How, oh, Homer! Uh, <coughs> oh, I'm going to regret that. Homer, I have to call your mother, except we won't meet her for another eight seasons. Didn't she, uh, th- did his mother marry, try to marry Mr. Burns? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, I, that, that was before season eight, though, wasn't it? Mm, I, I thought it was. It was one of the. It was like in in the post surrealist Simpsons phase, which was emblematic of their their kind of mid good Simpsons run. I think it was like right at the tail end of that when they had the Mother Simpson episode. But, well, but uh, once yeah. once again, I'm not going to argue with the uh, the proprietor of the flying slash fighting hellfish newsletter. So uh, <laughs> I I had that uh, that <sighs> ultimate guide to the Simpsons that I think now it's they've updated it for at least most of the the modern current seasons. But I poured through that fucking thing and just. I, the thing that struck me that was so amazing is that on its original that book's original release there were. I think around 200 episodes of the show, but they said in the liner notes that they wrote it over a summer. So just doing that math, there, there's only, you know, 90 ish, 100 days in the summer. They they had to have watched. I believe, and, I believe there's 500 days of summer, Chad. I'm sorry. You're, you're right. Obviously, my JGL is weak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the JGL is not strong with this one. Um, but the. Uh, no, I was just amazed at, at how much book construction they did in a very small period of time yeah. between seasons. Yeah, that, that is impressive and also disheartening because I, 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 as much as I love the early Simpsons seasons, that world is a depressing world to inhabit, I think. it's There's something just inherently bleak and desperate about it. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's because everything in The Simpsons is mob mentality. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah, I know, but it's like Springfield is just like like Donkey Kong Island is great, like escapist fun for me because it's a place I'd want to visit. I would never want to set foot in Springfield. Right, but but that's but that's why you get to enjoy it from afar. You get to know, look I, at all at all those rubes in Middle America and laugh at them. I guess, I guess. Anyway, um, maybe Middle America could be uh, who knows Eastern Seaboard. All right. Yeah. It could, all right. Anyway, so it's Oregon. Yeah, yeah, this is the biggest. I, I, I can't. And I'm like this. And oh, by the way, there's different modes for like different age ranges. Like you can have like the baby mode. You can have the normal mode or you can have like the expert gamer pedophile adult mode. Um, so uh, there's like five different difficulties levels um, for the game and which frustrates me because I'm going to have to play through each one eventually. Are you? But, yeah. W- which one did you start with, though? I just started with normal because I wanted a taste. I wanted, like, the basic taste of the game. Okay. I did uh, see that they um, – I was looking at the description. Thankfully, the YouTube video I watched actually scrolled through each of the options before picking normal. And <laughs> it did say, though, like, on the advanced option, the third highest out of the four, it said, this is the option for adults who are looking for a challenge. And yeah. you went with the one below that. <laughs> Because I, I just wanted – I didn't go with the baby one. I didn't go with uh-huh. the baby. I didn't, I didn't go with, uh, <laughs> with you know, little, little, little baby's uh, non-difficulty just uh, day in the park mode. I, I went with regular 12-year-old mode. Okay. Solid. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, but it, it was like – so this is a game for kids ostensibly. I mean I hate to keep using that phraseology because – is Donkey Kong Country a game for kids? Is Banjo Kazooie a game for kids? Not really. It's a game for everyone. But so why is Skylanders different? And it's that whole pandering Saturday morning cartoon kind of vibe that I think it, it, it's toys to life. So yes, they're going to market it towards uh, a kind of a younger age bracket. But right. Um, so here I am, absolutely like not being able to handle these vehicle controls, and I my, like my brain. I I feel like. Either the game is dyslexic or I'm dyslexic, but we're not in sync. And eventually, I just have to like turn it off and walk away. For and how long? How long have you been at it? Because I th- I do feel like ultimately you 
you it will click in your brain. It, it will. And I, I mean, I got through this section eventually, but I wasn't having fun with it. I was just mm. getting pissed off. And you when struggled with it at E3. And I think the I think you might have been like getting pissed off, but you didn't want to make the booth attendant feel bad. Was that what was going on? Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember you really struggling with it and him trying to like helpfully tell you how to do it. But no amount of that will really help if you if your brain just simply can't comprehend the controls and and here's what's worse though there's like items to collect everywhere every nook and cranny has a different item to collect and i have no Mm -hmm. idea what these items do because there's no instruction manual i mean i guess there is it's somewhere buried in like the layers of menu but there's there's so much to read and and it doesn't help and like there's no like <laughs> there's no like tutorial mode there's no spiral mountain where you it walks you through everything and you have it committed to memory before you actually proceed with the adventure it just throws you into it it's cruel it's wow. unforgiving um like I'm collecting all these like little I guess they're gears or they're little like bolts or or like washers or something. I it don't know looks what like they... fr- from what I saw it looked like you were collecting a, a ton of tiny gears, but then there were also these like bigger gears that are split into four pieces that you have to collect. Yeah, like... I don't know I don't know what it is. And then like I got a hat. I won a hat at some point. Oh, congrats. And it was it was a bottle cap hat. And, and it like <laughs> it, it it gives you it, like so Donkey Kong's wearing a giant bottle cap on his head. Is this Pikmin now? Yeah. And, and I'm like is is this like the depth that his alcoholism has suffered that he's like <laughs> he's just drinking giant like f- like malt beverages and then putting the bottle cap on his head like yeah hey, look at me i'm a i'm drunk donkey kong I'm, yeah Don- donkey not normally confused but for the whiskey yeah maybe that's why he didn't speak english in the skylanders comic he was just <laughs> <laughs> and bowser yeah. bowser's well acquainted with his hard drinking ways um mm-hmm. he actually, could overlook all the belligerents actually if i do if we do come down on the side that the uh, comic is fan and that would be a good fan wag that donkey was just blind stinking drunk um well you i think we ultimately decided against the the um cough syrup addled drug trip for donkey kong jungle beat right only because like we don't want to say any of it was an illusion um like oh, any, of it, right. any of it was a hallucination but he can still have like dependency issues sure <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have issues with that um no, it, it it's so like and the like the hats give you like plus five on armor or like offense or whatever you know. Oh, so you have stats. You can upgrade your character. Yeah, you can. You can augment them by what hat they're wearing. And there's like a pirate hat you can wear, which I want to get. Like that looks cool. Um, Does it store your stats? You know, much like the amiibo has has some uh, well, flash I, I, memory. I, yeah, I mean, there's like moves. You upgrade your moves. I don't think you have like levels so much, but you mm-hmm. you do have like certain stats and you upgrade your moves as just how you get diddy fine alongside you and, and other yeah. things so well i just mean like if i were to if i was a 12 year old and i took my amiibo that i'd completely leveled up or my uh you know my fucking skylander thing that's completely 100 percent filled up over to my friend's house would it still have that level on it oh yeah i think i think that definitely stores it in the skylander itself cool um, but of course you switch it to amiibo mode and, uh, I'm not sure if this, the software in the amiibo for Turbo Church Donkey Kong is this, I, I mean, I guess it's just the same as the Smash Brothers one, right? Have you tried it? I would imagine I, the same, but I, I, I don't have I haven't tried it yet, um, because I can't be asked to turn on Smash Brothers. Um, mm. but, um, <laughs> no, it, it, if I can talk about the figure real quick, the Skylanders figure, Please. it is it is definitely a lower quality than the actual Amiibos, whereas like the Amiibos are like a hard chunk of sculpted plastic. Like there's heft to them. Th- these are definitely more lightweight. The yeah. the detail isn't as great. Um, the paint job is pretty poor in some places. Um, I would I would definitely recommend buying it in stores so you could pick out which paint job you have. Um, I tried that with with the Diddy Amiibo, and no matter no matter how many I looked through, it always looked like he had been kicked in the head by a mule. Yeah, the yeah, the initial waves of Diddy definitely had the derp eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, it wasn't. He like, it wasn't cross eyes. They were like looking outward and it, like Scott, like Scott Walker, like like uh, Scott Walker, Scott G- Walker, G- former GOP candidate and Wisconsin governor Scott Walker, perpetual derp eyes. No, I did <laughs> derp eyes. That's that's kind of an unkind way to categorize <laughs> someone's I'll, medical I'll, condition. At least, at least I'm not calling him a spack like Rare does. Oh my god! All what? Right. 
I'm quoting <laughs> Bad Fur Day. That's hey, it's Chris Seaver. Take it up with him, buddy. I. <laughs> I, I will. I, I've talked with him on Twitter. Look, if I'm if I'm quoting the lyrics to a Dire Straits song, you're not going you're not going to jump all over me for saying the f bomb, right? And by the f bomb, I'm not saying fuck. I, I... no. Uh, and uh, although I I would uh, discourage you from testing that theory live on air. Oh, that's that's okay because I don't want my MTV right now, Chad. I'm I'm perfectly content moving these microwave ovens. Mm-hmm. So and refrigerators. <laughs> anyway um the little f-bomb's a millionaire um he's got a oh, jet airplane moving on hey take it up with dire straits I uh, will. so yeah i i am at a loss for like all I the things to them on twitter <laughs> <laughs> you fucker <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting a little punch drunk. This has been a long episode. <laughs> or it, it actually, feels long. It feels it, long. It feels long. This has actually been shorter than I think half of our output so far. But yeah, there's just so much stuff to do and collect. And I guess if this is like if you've been on board the Skylanders train since the start, you're going to be riding this caboose no problem. But for me, I I I I'm like laying on the tracks right now, and I I'm like my body is broken. I. I, 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 this must be how, like, people feel, like, jumping into, like, nuts and bolts or something. Like, Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts with all that history behind you, you know? Mm -hmm. if Who who have never played Kazooie or Tooie or any of the other games. So, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, but even then, I feel like Rare would, like, ha, it, it made it easier for newbies to jump in than Activision has done here. And maybe that's just me, but mm. I don't know. Well, it's... It, it, something that something that strikes me about just the the gameplay in general i was i've been having a hard time figuring like why it's not clicking and and y- your criticisms were more tonal the like it it, it feels like a, kind of a, a cheap cartoon that wants to sell you stuff or, or you know, so and, that, it, to, to be fair i don't really have a problem with that because again uh-huh. this is not donkey kong's world it is specifically he is in another dimension so yeah. a I'm very fine- capitalist dimension I'm I'm fine with Trump 2016. I'm fine with <laughs> that tonal. I get to use your term tonal whiplash. I'm fine with it because it works for the story. It's just hard for me to get invested when when I am here for Donkey Kong. And by the way, Donkey Kong's moves are perfect. Like he's got yeah. references from every era. It's it's beautiful. Like the character himself is spot on. It's just the world around him. I, I'm not endeared to it yet. To, to me, though, it's uh, the thing that I'm struggling with more is is more rooted in the gameplay, and it's it it seems very similar to the problem that I have with the Lego games. The, you know, it's like the, the first Lego game. You not, play, not 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 dimensions, but the actual Lego games that preceded it, like Lego yeah, I, Star I can't, Wars. And, yeah, Lego Batman. Like like I can't. Yeah, Lego Lord of the Rings. You know, I can't speak for dimensions at all. But in those games, it's it's you know very it's like if if gameplay was a square they would all have rounded edges you know it's like every everything it keeps you in this very it it, it restrict it's kind of like the movement in grab by the ghoulies where um although you know grab by the ghoulies has a lot of other gameplay mechanics that are very unique and cool and challenging those games it's kind of a button masher for the com the the Lego games, it's like a button masher for the combat. The areas in which you can move are very restricted. Um, they box you in much more than the actual boundaries of the world. And the it's sort of it's like the the constant drip that you that you give to lab rats to get them to keep coming back. It's like you defeated this guy, you get a bunch of little pieces of Lego, a bunch of little pieces of Lego, a bunch of little pieces of Lego, and you move on. And it, but but there's not much more to sink your teeth into and watching skylanders play out it really felt like that like that same sort of um very very base gameplay that yeah. that, that that appeals to the lazy part of your brain that it, it, just like Okay, it's one set piece after another, but there's no organic connection between them. At least in my my opinion, I don't know. Um, I don't even need the organic connection. I'm talking just about about the gameplay itself. It doesn't seem like there's much challenge, and and maybe that's because I was watching a, a mid difficulty, and you're playing a mid difficulty. Maybe it gets brutal, and you really have to think creatively. But that's it. That's it. It's not. Yeah. It's not intellectually stimulating. And, and to be fair, You're, I ha- I haven't you know gotten that far into the game, so yeah, I, yeah. you know, 
I, 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 th- these are first impressions after all. This is not my sure. review of Skylanders um, Superchargers. This is just what I'm feeling at the moment. And, um, you know, it, it's just it's a hard game to get engaged with and mm-hmm. for, for various reasons. And, and I think that's, that's frustrating because I, I, I am supportive of this. I like Donkey Kong being in this game. And I think this is a great portrayal of Donkey Kong. Um, this is like one of the best cameo appearances he's ever had. Um, and Diddy's there too. And that just makes it even better. Um, but just all, all these things are like conspiring against me from really, really being able to enjoy it. Um, and yeah, it's the yeah. Ga- the gameplay itself is just, it's not very, like you, you brought up ghoulies and I'm not sure what comparison you're trying to make there. Was it just like, um, no, just, just the way that like the, in, in ghoulies, you know, as you're, as you're moving around the room, it, it, it feels like they're, they're, there are sort of these invisible boundaries that are, that define the actual area in which Cooper can move. Um, whereas like Banjo, you can go into every crevice if you can actually get there. Um, you know, it, you know, if I think there are like invisible zones that box you in with, with sort of smooth rounded edges on them, uh, in ghoulies and then in those Lego games. But again, as I said, aside from, from what you can physically move your character into ghoulies has much more interesting and deep gameplay in addition to that. Whereas these, as these, these type of games, the, the more child focused ones, um, Lego, Skylanders, etc. To me, they seem like they 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 sand off the edges of gameplay. They sand off the edges of of navigating the worlds. They show you a very very low difficulty thing to do. You go do it. You get an inconsequential reward. But as you're collecting that reward, the next easy thing to do is in your sights. It's it's like a 3D platformer version of a match three puzzler. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah, um, I I think it's just yeah. Again, uh, we're we're critiquing a kids' game basically, and it, it's a it's a new no exp- no no that is that is a bullshit justification because that this is the dumbing down of kids' games. And, and and granted, again, again, I am speaking under the premise that my observations are representative of the entire game. I have only seen a very, very small section of this, and I've only played a Lego game from like six years ago. But okay, okay so but I, I know within I, that context, I, this is I, the dumbing down. I, of I'm kids not. Games. I'm not trying to justify it. I, I'm just saying that people are going to be listening to this and saying, "Well, come on, Chad and Hyle. It's it's Skylanders. But, You're why why are you beating up on Skylanders? No, I'm I'm, I'm look. We we had kids games back in the day, and I I know this. this I I sound like Cranky Kong now, but, but I mean, did we have? I mean, because we we played like Mario. We played. I mean, Donkey Kong Country. I mean, yeah. like 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 those were our games. Like uh, maybe I've never played a game that panders to me like to this extent. Yeah, I mean, but those games. It was a true sense of of risk accomplishment reward in this it there i never felt risk and i never really felt reward um i i think and i, think and, and they, I never I think, felt those things vicariously watching the video of this one i think maybe the reward in this game is going out to your local toys r us and buying a new character each week and being able to run around the game with them and that's the true reward of the skylanders are maybe. they weekly releases no, I'm just saying, like, oh. I'm, I'm thinking as a kid, like, with your allowance or your uh-huh. parents' budget, you know, oh, you can get one figure a week, little uh, Timmy. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. T- so- Timmy Timmy doesn't know the hard knock life where you have to mow everyone's lawns in your neighborhood to buy yourself a Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Getting an You're- allowance from his parents. You really should uh, go back to the lawn business, Chad. The more you speak of it, the more just, I don't know, endearing it sounds. Um, yeah. There are no lawns in New York. I would be cutting the pavement. You, you, you would be giving Brazilians. Yeah. And at that point, I'm just a Con Edison worker. Wait, Con Edison workers? Like like wax women? No, no. I was going off of the earlier thing of, of cutting the pavement, not giving Brazilians. Oh, I thought cutting the pavement was a euphemism. Oh, Anything can be a euphemism if you try hard enough. That's true. Um, eh, so anyway, uh, yeah, Skylander Superchargers. I, I, I'm I, going to commit to it, and I will hopefully have more opinions as I progress in the game. Mm-hmm. It's it's just, it's, it's surreal. I, I think my biggest hurdle, more than the gameplay, more than the controls, it's 
I don't know what the fuck is going on. And I'm a guy who, who is somebody who like digs story, who likes to know the context of the world I'm in, who right. likes to know, like who wants to see an adventure unfold and, and, and be delighted and charmed by being in the middle of this adventure and this story. If I can't wrap my head around what's going on, I'm going to lose interest really quickly. And I'm not going to want to progress if I can't get my head around what's what I'm seeing. So that that's my biggest hurdle right now. That's my hang up. It's it's like a sexual dysfunction. I cannot <laughs> I, I cannot continue with with superchargers until you, Heil, you could have just said dysfunction. You didn't need to say sexual dysfunction. But that's basically what it is. This, this is this is pseudo sexual. I mean, look, everything relates back to sex, Chad. Everything is sexual. Do I need to get out my butterfly net? <laughs> yeah. This has been a File Two production. Que rico.